Hey guys, it is time to install our lithium battery. This is a JSD Solar, that's the brand name. It's 12.8 volt, 400 amp hour battery, and it is a LiPo 4. We've had this thing for a couple months. I have not had time to install it yet. Now it's time. We're about to go on vacation here in a couple weeks, and I'm gonna need this battery. So we're gonna get it installed today. First thing I gotta do is make sure I've got plenty of cable, which I've already done that. The cable's long enough to go and curl around and, and go in this box. But also I need to drill a couple holes in the side of the box put some grommets in, put the cable in. Check it out. Okay, so I have measured the width of the battery. Now the width of this thing inside is, that's about 12 and a half inside, 12 and a half inches. The battery is about nine inches wide. So I've got an inch and a half or so to play with here on the outside edges if I put the battery in the center. I'm gonna close this lid and that way I'll know I'm not drilling up too high. And I'm gonna use a step bit to drill a hole, one for the negative or the ground on this side, and one for the positive on this side. I'm also going to, have to drill one in the back for this one to come through and go over. The grommets I'm using are from Harbor Freight. I picked those up a couple years ago and I'm using the 7 16 by three quarter. There was actually three of those and that's what I need. I'm drilling three holes. The grommets actually go in pretty easy, but the cable, you may need to use a little Vaseline on them. That's what I did. Lubed up this cable, slid it in. So drilling through the back of the box there toward the trailer, you have to be really careful and make sure you don't go in and hit the trailer. There's plenty of room there with the step bit between the box and the trailer, but you still have to watch it. Be careful. Good thing about a step bit is it goes through a step at a time. It doesn't just punch straight through and go through and cause damage to the trailer. Now due to the location, the tight fit and very little room to work with, I was not able to install the grommet and then install the cable through the grommet. I had to install the cable through the hole, put the grommet around the cable, and then install the grommet into the hole, which was no easy task, but I made it work. Okay, so weight on a travel trailer is a big topic, and I know that's probably a question. How much does my new battery weigh? Well, here are the weights of the old batteries. The first one, 45.8 pounds. The next one, 41 pounds. You'll see, there you go. And this is just my old bathroom scales I'm using. Now the weight of the new battery, 86.8 pounds. Exact exchange in weight from the old battery to the new battery. So this is me trying to install an 87 pound battery by myself. Instead of waiting, I decided to go ahead and make it work, which it worked out, as you'll see. But the problem was the reach. Me reaching across that distance for that amount of weight, it just wasn't gonna happen without me dropping the battery. Okay, so the battery's heavy. It's 80 whatever pounds. It's an awkward situation. It's not just sitting it straight in. I thought I was going to be able to do it, but I could not without dropping it. I didn't want to drop it in there and damage either the box or the battery. So that's what this strap's for. I strapped it over, tied it on, hooked it here, tightened it up, left enough slack in it so that it would go in the box but not fall to the bottom. And then once all the weight was on it, I just let it slack out, and let it down easily. So worked out great think outside the box sometimes i'm out here by myself today so there's no other option so about six months ago i received a package that had some good quality packing material i saved that packing material because i knew i would need it one day and this is the day i'm using this to pack around the battery to keep it centered and secure 
and it should not move around at all inside this box. Here you see me cautiously lowering the lid of the box. I know there's enough room, but I want to be sure before I actually close the lid. You don't want to close the lid of a metal box onto the top of a positive and negative terminal. The event that would follow would be very unpleasant. I always use caution when working with batteries. Since the box is mounted as it is, these chains are not necessary. And to reduce the risk of this chain hitting the positive terminal, I'm going to go ahead and remove it and I'll remove the other one as well. Okay, one last thing and this thing is complete. I took extra precautions here. I cut a piece of plastic that rides right there on top and it's a snug fit when I put it in there. You may have noticed where these chains were connected, this part drops down and it's just for those chains, but it's really close to the negative terminal, not the positive terminal at all. It sits right around this area, but just in case, for kicks and giggles, right there. That'll ride right there. So now, this project is safe, secure, and complete. Okay, one of my main concerns was, will this controller, onboard controller, charge the lithium battery? I reached out to WIFCO. I told them that my model number for our current controller is WF9855. The representative there was very helpful, very nice. Customer service was great. He said, but that model will not charge a lithium battery to 100%. He said it will recognize it and charge it, but not recognize it as a lithium battery. It may not charge it past 90% based on the fact that the current onboard controller is behind the breaker panel and behind a bunch of wires and not anywhere I want to try to change it. I decided to test this battery with this charger and see how it would go. Now the battery has a Bluetooth. I got an app on my phone and I'm able to look at the battery on my phone or at the app and see what the charge is at the time. I turned the battery disconnect back to green and at that point I heard the refrigerator kick on. I then got the app, looked at it. This is Thursday, June 13th at 1.14 p.m. and it showed 48% with 20 hours and 6 minutes left on the battery. So after checking the battery, seeing it at 48%, then hooking it to power, I decided to come back at least 24 hours later to check it again. So almost 30 hours later, I came back on June 14th at 6.43 p.m. It showed 97% charge, 18 minutes left to charge. Later that same evening, I came back at 10.42 p.m. to check it, it was 100% charged. So that's charged to 100% in right around 30 hours. So at this point, I want to discharge it. I want to run that refrigerator on that battery and see how long I can go. So on Father's Day, June 16th, 12.48 p.m., I disconnect the power. At that point, it shows 99% charged, 78 hours and 54 minutes left to empty. I wanted to wait at least 24 hours before I checked it again. Monday, June 17th at 3.33 p.m. Now this is close to 27 hours of runtime on just the refrigerator. It showed 72% with 66 hours and 36 minutes left to empty. 72% after 27 hours of runtime, that's going to be about 100 amp hours per day or 25% per 24 hours. I came back Tuesday, June 18th at 1.10 p.m. It showed 50% with 50 hours, 48 minutes left to empty. Just over 48 hours after disconnecting from shore power. So again, that's about 25% or 100 amp hours per 24 hours. Based on that, if that's accurate, I would feel comfortable going 72 hours, three full days without a charge, which should leave me around 25%. I could probably go longer than that. I wouldn't need to. So I really only need a max of about 36 hours between charges out of that battery while we're dry camping. So guys, I hope this has been helpful, somewhat informative, and if nothing else, entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.